Ed Woodward, how's it going, mate? I'm a massive Man United fan. I'm just wondering if you've decided who's going to be the new director of football. Shocker! Fred the Red? Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here and you are very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down and welcome to my official Manchester United season review of 2018 to 2019. What a season. But you know what? Many of us are acting surprised how this season turned out. Outraged. But didn't we know this was going to happen from the end of last season when we lost the FA Cup final to Chelsea? Didn't we know? Didn't we know Mourinho was going to get the sack by Christmas? Which he did just before Christmas. But let's go back to the beginning of the season because even at that point, pre-season, when we did the tour, Mourinho was saying some very, very inflammatory things, with a lot of toxic things. He was telling fans that they shouldn't waste their time coming to the tour. He didn't seem happy. He was throwing hints that he wasn't getting the players that he wanted, that the players at the club weren't good enough. We wasn't happy with Jose Mourinho. But I'm the kind of guy that kind of likes to say things the way they are, even against my point of view. Mourinho didn't do himself any favours, but this isn't the Mourinho we wanted anyway. The Mourinho that came to England, joined Chelsea, that's what we wanted. But we never got that. That Mourinho is dead. Right, so what we had was a broken Mourinho. But let me say this. If you appoint Jose Mourinho, you're appointing a man who likes to appoint physical six-foot players, experienced players, who play in an, a well-organised, oiled machine. If you don't want to do that as a club, as a chairman, why bring Jose Mourinho? I'll tell you why. Because we're a club. We're, it's all about the corporate situation. It's about money and reputation. They wanted to bring a high-profile manager to say, look what we've just done. Look how big our cock is. That's basically what they wanted to do. But for me, if you bring in Jose Mourinho, you can't expect him to be somebody else. He's going to bring older players in, physical players. The football isn't going to be great, but the results will be solid. 1-0 wins. But because he came in and wasn't given what he wanted, he wasn't, he wasn't expected to be Jose Mourinho. He was expected to be Sir Alex Ferguson, play great football, you know, buy Galacticos, buy players that they wanted. And Mourinho was quite honest about the situation, really, that he didn't believe the players he had could play the way he wanted. And I said this, to be, to, to be successful under Mourinho, he's got to have specific players to play in his system and the way he likes to play, or it doesn't work. The players we had couldn't play the Mourinho way. They didn't have the strength, the mentality, the, you know, the physical attributes to play in the Mourinho team. And that's why, ultimately, Jose Mourinho failed at Manchester United. Because he wasn't allowed to be Jose Mourinho. And as I say, why bring him into the club if you're not going to allow him to be the manager he already is? I wanted him out. He became toxic. The environment became toxic. But he became toxic because he wasn't allowed to be the manager that we all knew and we all loved. And in the end... He became very bitter and very twisted because he was being controlled. He wasn't allowed to talk to the players the way he wanted. He wasn't allowed to discipline the players. He had issues with Pogba. We can see, I want to talk about Pogba and I want to talk about the whole squad. But right now we're talking about Mourinho. So ultimately, Mourinho didn't do himself any favours. I'm not a Mourinho defender, but I can understand his position when he was brought into a club to be somebody else, to buy players. You know, oh, these aren't Manchester United players. Yes. So why did you bring him in? Why did you bring a man in who wanted to bring in 29, 30, 31, 32-year-olds, six-foot physical specimens that are there to do a job? Because our squad couldn't do the job that he needed. He needs specialised players to play the Mourinho way. But our club didn't want that. We want to play glamorous football. But that's not Jose Mourinho. That's not his fault. Jose Mourinho can only be Jose Mourinho. And this was the problem from the very beginning. So we sat Mourinho just before Christmas and we're all happy. We think everything's going to be all right now. 
So they bring in Oli Gunnar Solskjaer as a temporary manager. I believe that they always were going to make him permanent. Um, I believe that Oli wasn't picking the team or doing the tactics or formation when we were in that unbelievable 13-match unbeaten run. That was the highlight of the season, of course. It felt like Manchester United was back. It felt like we had our club back. But of course, it was a false dawn because they appointed him full time before the end of the season, which was stupid. And then they let him do the tactics and make the decisions. And we've seen what's happened. I know a lot of you will say I'm talking absolute bollocks that he's got, you know, back him. He was the one doing the tactics and formations. No, it doesn't make any sense. How can you go from a from a team that's unbeaten in 13 games to becoming horrible and badly, you know, playing terrible football, going back to playing the way we were under Jose Mourinho? How do you explain that? Well, all of a sudden, we're not playing the great football anymore. We had a few injuries. I accept that. But at the end of the day, there's so many issues at this club beyond Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, beyond Mourinho, beyond the LVG beyond David Moyes, that's looking at things with one eye, basically. You've got to see what's going on here. This is a very badly run club. And I never used to believe it. I'm a subscriber to a channel called The United Stand, and they used to say it all the time, and I used to kind of have to switch them off because it used to wind me up. I said, no, you're wrong, it's just Mourinho. But you know what? They were right. They were right. Um, and I was wrong. And I can admit, I'm big enough, I'm about six foot, so I'm big enough and ugly enough to kind of accept when I'm wrong. This club is badly run, and I didn't see it. I've only just seen it. From the moment Sir Alex left, there had to be changes. You need the changes because Sir Alex Ferguson was doing everything. He wasn't just a coach. He was, he was the one who made all the decisions, who he bought, who he sold. He was the director of football as well as the manager. So we lost that element. So what they did was they thought, oh, Moyes could come in and do the same as him. Van Gaal could come in and do the same as him. Um, Mourinho could come in and be the manager that Sir Alex was. And I said at the very beginning, you can't expect modern day managers to do that. And I mean, these are older managers. They're, they're not even your, your Pep Guardiola's or your Pochis, you know, or your Klopp's. These are kind of past, you know, older than them. So we needed a director of football and any chief executive worth his, you know, bacon or salt, right, or whatever you want to say, would have known that the, the, you know, the vacuum that Ferguson left had to be filled. And that need, we needed a director of football to fill that. We didn't make the right decisions. They allowed Ferguson to decide on Moyes. When they could have got Klopp, forget about the nonsense Sir Alex said that he wasn't available. For the right price, anyone's available. We allowed him to go to Liverpool. You will tell me that he's been at Liverpool and won nothing. Let me ask you a serious question. Where would you rather be now? Liverpool or Manchester City that are well-run clubs who are winning games, who are dominating the league? Or would you rather be us? Run like us badly? You know how we're run? We're run like a club that within two or three years will be relegated. Relegated. Because this is how it starts. This is how the fever starts, right? You um, First, you don't run your club properly. You make the wrong decisions. You bring in um, wrong managers for our club after wrong managers for our club, right? And then you sack them. And then you go through this rever you know, reverberal sliding, swinging doors, if you like. We are going to be relegated if we carry on like this. You know, I don't believe, and I when that when those thirteen when that thirteen match unbeaten run was going on, I thought, yeah, soul shows at the wheel, awesome, right? I thought, awesome, yeah, we've arrived, we're back. But of course, we were all being stupid and carried away because football is a reactive environment, isn't it? But we soon realised after that run that Oli isn't a manager. He isn't. He failed at Cardiff. The only club he's done anything at is in Norway for Molder. It's the club he was, um, you know, he played for, he did well at, he's managed it, he's done well. But I don't believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has what it takes to be manager of Manchester United. But then the club are not going to help him be a, a good Manchester United manager because they're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to appoint a, the right um, director of football. We're now talking about Fletcher, our former player. I forgot his first name, Fletcher, right? 
coming in as director of football. According to Sky Sports News last night, he's the favourite for the job. I hope they're wrong. I hope we're making a good decision here. But it's like what Mark Goldbridge says from the United Stand. Why have they waited so long to appoint a director of football? They could have done it after they sat Mourinho. You know, because plans have to be in place. You can't just bring in a director of football and then say, oh, um, oh, I know, right, um, you're here now, let's get some players in. That's not how it works. Transfers take time. Um, for me, uh, for me personally, um, I am very, very concerned what I'm, what I'm seeing from go what's going on. Now, now, also for me, I think that when you, when you think about all of this, and you, I mean, sometimes I, I understand that fan channels have to oomph the hatred up a bit and, you know, be very negative to get the views and the clicks in. And I don't always accept everything they say. I'm, you know, I'm not a clone. I'm not a robot. I understand that sometimes um, these fan channels over-exaggerate situations. But I think everything that everybody's saying, this is what... It, this, it, we've become a banter club. Um, I think it, the things that these people are saying, these fan channels, these, you know, these high-profile people have done well out of YouTube and uh, social media, we're all saying the same things, basically. This club is a mess. This club is badly run. And... We are waiting for announcements to see if they make the right decisions. I think I'm still calm because I'm going to wait to see what these people actually do. Um, so, you know, you bring in Solskjaer and really that's what the crux of the season is. The 13 match unbeaten run, the 8-9 games where we're absolutely terrible. And I mean, we, we sign off by losing to a relegated side 2-0 quite convincingly as well. So... We're in a situation now where every fan is worried. Some fans have got their heads buried up their backsides. I know that's hard to do physically. But how do I see the future of Manchester United? Um, how do I evaluate this season? This season has been one of the worst of my experience. And I've been a Manchester United supporter since, 90, since the end of 94-95. That's how I fell in love with the club when we were trying to beat West Ham and Blackburn. Ultimately won the league. But the passion I saw that day not only made me fall in love with Manchester United, even though we lost the league that year, it made me fall in love with football. I didn't even like football before that game. So this is where I was. So that's how long I've been a Manchester United supporter. And I think all we want as Manchester United supporters, really, of course we want trophies and dominance and all that. But I think most of us would like to win games, play some good football sometimes, have players who kind of are good enough mentally and ability-wise to play for the club. But some distasteful things happened um, on the last game, of course, because Pogba was attacked. Um, verbally, not physically, of course. I think Pogba could hold his own, and that would be that be Cantonar territory, wouldn't it? But um, what do I think about Paul Pogba and the squad? I've, I, I don't like to believe that any player doesn't try. This is what I think. I think there's a lot of players in our squad who don't have the right mentality to be at Manchester United. They're not strong enough. They want to play for the club. They're desperate to remain at the club. They try their best, but they can't. They don't have the mental strength to be Manchester United players. Listen, for 13 games, we were playing great football, right? And, and unbeaten. So they can't be that bad. So what happened? And you, you expect after a 13-match run of not losing, you may lose and draw a couple, but then get, get back on track. But mentally, they're not strong enough. And also, Oli was changing his tactics and being a lot more negative. And for me and a lot of the fans, doing the wrong things. Now we get to Pogba. Now, we get, we're get fans now. You see it on Twitter all the time. Oh, you can't have a go at Pogba. What about that player? He's worse. This is the thing with Pogba. And this is why Pogba gets a lot of the negativity. Pogba cost us around 90 to 100 million pounds, right? Pogba is the most talented individual in our squad. He's also a World Cup winner. Paul Pogba isn't consistent. Paul Pogba is good enough to carry that squad and that team. We saw it with Cantona in 95-96. We didn't have the greatest of teams. The youngsters came in the class of 92, but we weren't very strong that season. And there wasn't a lot of confidence. But when Cantona came back, he gave us the, um, the confidence. And you saw how the players started to kind of feel a lot better about themselves because Cantona would score out of nothing. Now, this squad, this squad clearly, mentality-wise, isn't good enough. So Pogba, one of the best players in the world, should be able to, you know, ca carry us through, but he's not. He's that good. 
I don't think Pogba is lazy. I don't think Pogba doesn't care. He looks sometimes that way, but he hasn't been consistent enough for his ability. And that's why people are really, really upset with him. He has not performed good enough on a consistent level. You can throw, he's the, to me, he's the highest goal scorer and he was in the Premier League team of the year. None, all that is irrelevant. The relevance is, are you a consistent player for Manchester United? You should be the inspiration for the rest of these players. And you are not. You are behaving just as badly. And your mentality is just as weak as theirs. So we've got this situation now. Should Pogba leave? Should, should he stay? I won't cry if he leaves. Um, if, if he's going to stay and he's going to be a beacon for the rest of the players, then stay. Now, there's an excuse about Pogba I won't accept. Oh, the players are so bad. How can he play well in this team? That's ridiculous. A man with this ability, passing range and goal scoring range, shouldn't have an excuse like that. It's pathetic. And it is an excuse. So my opinion is, actually, get as much money as you can for him. Let him go, because he's clearly not the answer to our problems. Also, we've got this situation with Herrera and all these other players. They've allowed contracts to run down. Now, obviously, someone like Sanchez, who just hasn't done it for us, has to go. The highest paid player in the Premier League. Again, more mistakes by the hierarchy at Manchester United. And this is what I'm talking about, a badly run club. And everyone can see it now. This is what's so embarrassing for us and the club. Everyone can see how badly run they are, allowing contracts to go, um, allowing Herrera's contract to run down. Now, I admit, Herrera's no angel here, right? Herrera wanted a lot of money and the club weren't willing to give it to him. But it's because they gave the advantage to him in negotiations by allowing his contract to run down. Or maybe he didn't want to sign it. That, that is very viable. Maybe they were trying to ask him, do you want to negotiate now? And he was refusing. Maybe Herrera wanted to go all the time. So as much as I like him as a player and he seems like a nice lad, I think it's very easy to say this is the club's fault. He, under he got the club. Why are Smalling, Young and Jones allowed to stay and he's not? I don't believe that. I believe he wanted to move and he got the move. He wanted the money. So all this stuff that my heart's red and things like that, all I've got is red in my heart. Yes, mate, we've all got blood in our heart or we'd be fucking dead. I think I said it on another video as well, didn't I? But anyway, the point is, I think he always wanted to go. So, But there have been a running down of contracts and they have failed in contract negotiations. So basically, we've seen a club with a very weak-minded squad, a manager with no experience, a club legend that I adore and I love, but a man who shouldn't be the manager of Manchester United. There is an opportunity here to kind of get a good director of football in, get a world-class manager in who wants to stay with us for five or six years, who wants to be part of the plan. And that's Pochettino. He's the perfect man for his, this job. I believe Poch still wants the job, the Manchester United job. There's nothing stopping Manchester United making him manager. Maybe that is the plan. Maybe Oli will get another role. And maybe that is the plan. I don't know. Is there a plan? That's the thing. So you see, when you lose a long-running manager like Sir Alex Ferguson, there's going to be problems. But if you plug the holes that he leaves by his departure properly, the problem is nobody should have listened to Ferguson. They took too much advice from him. They brought in his former player who was never good enough to manage the team. You see, David Moyes, was intimidated by Sir Alex. When Ferguson came to his door and said, you're the next manager in Manchester United. I could tell at the press conference when he told us that story, he did it because he felt he had to. He knew he wasn't good enough to do this job, even though he keeps on saying he, he felt the club gave up on him too soon. I think the man's crazy, personally. He wasn't good enough. He wasn't good enough to be our manager. Uh, LVG was wrong for our club. So was Jose Mourinho. That's not their fault. That's the club's fault for bringing managers in with the wrong mentality for this club. It doesn't make them bad managers or bad men or bad people. It just means they were wrong for our club. So now we're in a situation where we have to make big decisions. If we decide to go with this boot room mentality, which is what they're trying to do, and I think this comes from Sir Alex, where we get an ex-player as director of football, an ex-player as manager, an ex-player as assistant manager. Now, Mike Phelan is a great guy. 
But just because um, we were doing well when he was our, our assistant manager under Sir Alex, the best manager of all time, doesn't mean that we're going to go back to the good old days. I think Manchester United are a club living in the past. And I think they're a club looking to the past too much. And that goes for the fans, the board, the entire club. We are not. Under Ferguson in our glory days, we were modern. We were doing the right things. We were doing things that other clubs weren't doing. But now we're doing things we shouldn't be doing. And it's for it's all there for everyone to see. And it's worrying. It's sad. People are frustrated. People are angry. Where do we go from here? The club need to appoint a good director of football. The club need to think again. Oli Solskjaer will not be a good manager for our club. Respectfully, respectfully, something has to be done and something has to be done now. And Ed Woodward cannot be the chief executive. He can be someone who makes money for the Glazers, someone else in the club. But he cannot be making all the big decisions. You're just dealing with an accountant here. That's it. So, in closing, I think that Manchester United, if they go the direction they're going, with Fletcher as director of football, Solskjaer as manager, we will not get anywhere. And in the end, within two or three seasons, this club will be relegated. And it's history repeating itself. After Busby, we made all the same mistakes. And we're doing them again. Meanwhile, the fans of this great club are watching our rivals, City and Liverpool, tear everything in front of them open. Liverpool will be in the Champions League. City have won the league. They could win a domestic treble. Wow. Great seasons for both clubs. While we embarrass ourselves with crazy decisions, I will wait to see what decisions are made this summer. But the truth of the matter is, if things carry on the way they are, Winter is coming for Manchester United and we may never be able to melt that ice.